One, two, one, two. One, two, one, one two. two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Cool. One, two, one, two. So yeah, when I touch on the championship mixtape, mm -hmm. what can fans expect? What can your listeners expect from this tape? Literally the artwork is just all fire. You know, that's what I've been known for. You can see behind us, you can see the fire at the background. Um, it's just been given back to my core fan base called Sack Nation. They always love it when I rap, you know, so it's just basically just giving them the core fan base what they want. Okay, man. what made you come up with the title for this mistake? It was one, one production on there that felt like a championship. It's hard to like explain, you know, when you hear sound where all you think about is the grand finale. You know, okay. there's a production on there. Big shouts to Nova. So that birthed the, the energy for the project. Okay. And uh, you've not released the body of work since Jams, so 2022. Why is now the right time to release a tape? I never know. When I feel like it, I just drop it. You know, it could be a few months in between or two years in between. It doesn't really matter. I just have to feel it. And at this point, I just felt like um, I wanted to put something out. And um, it just made sense, especially coming from Jams. Those are like super commercial music. So what I'm, I'm known for as Sarkozy is hip hop. So mm -hmm. I just felt like if I have some records which is like hip hop records, why not give it to the fans? Exactly. Yeah. And um, you've had longevity within the scene, so it's been over 10 years. What is the key, would you say, to your successes and just staying in the game for so long? Loving what you do, that's the number one thing. Just love it, the passion for it. So it has nothing to do with if you're having a bigger record or you won an award or people love you or not, I just love music. Whether you like it or not, I love music. So that's my number one push. And I think if that's your focus, it's hard for that to be broken. If it was for the awards or the money, which I love money, by the way, don't get it twisted. Okay. I love money, but not, not because of that. I don't, I don't do music because of that. I do music because I love it. I love the art of writing, listening to my music, listening to other people's music. So I think the passion for it organically just made you relevant because you just love it. So I didn't notice that it was a, I don't think there's a plan to staying consistent. If you love something, you're definitely going to be consistent with it. Okay, man. Like you said, it's a passion for yourself. Um, do you find any differences when working on a mixtape compared to an album? Um, I don't really see differences because I don't approach any project thinking I'm about to do it. It okay. happens. Spontaneous. You know? Yes, yes. I've yeah. never been successful with saying I'm about to record a project. It never works. So I will just be there and I realize something is happening because I'm in a certain energy and I'm recording a certain type of music. And then that would tell me, oh, I think an album is happening. But I've never woke up and planned that I'm about to do an album. It never works for me. Okay, so yeah. if it's a spontaneous thing, I want to talk about like musical processes. When you get in the studio, is it about hearing the sound or do you have like a topic prior? when you go into the studio? Um, both ways, sometimes, but mostly, I think for the past four or five years, I've been moved by production. So the music has to be made already, that I'm inspired to write. You know, When I was coming, when I didn't have access to producers, when you didn't have money to go to the studio, that's when you write a lot in your head. Okay. But now uh, I've been pumping for, for a while, so I've gotten used to it. So I will have the, the track being sent to me, sometimes with a hook, sometimes without the hook, but then the beat is gonna like tell me what to, what to say. So, uh, but I always go to the studio when I'm about to finish what I've done. That means I practice a bit, record it. Oh, no, uh, written, practice, and then now I'm sure before I go to the studio. Way back, it used to be the other way around. I go to the studio to figure it out, but now I go there when I'm ready to, to record. So I don't go to the studio that much. I stay up in my room. I like to write when I'm uh, in a car. So maybe they drive me around. And, but by the time I get to the studio, I have to be very sure that I have the basis of what I want to do. Okay, fair. Yeah. And I want to talk about like live performances. So you previously performed at the O2, yes. Kentish Forum. How does UK compare to like performing in different continents as well? So Africa or America? Yeah, I think UK is not far from the feel back home in Ghana or Africa in general, because there's a lot of us here, you know, and even your type of music. I don't know what you call it, the Bashman or, you know, the yeah. type of sound. We can relate because it's dance music. So. You guys are not far from us, so when I perform here, it's not that different. So the energy is as great as Ghana. You know, you have my people in there, you have Nigerians in there, you have the people from the UK who understand Afrobeat at this point. So it's always nice when I perform here. Um, so yes, I would say probably next to Ghana, I can say UK is. The, it actually used to be the states because I okay. do hip hop, you know, and in the states they really love hip hop. But um, if, if I'm talking about turned up crowd. 
it has to be London. Okay. Yeah, big shout out to London. Next year I'm coming. Next year, okay. So um I wanna go back to Ghana now. So Christmas times you done Rapaholic. Yes. So the rebirth. Mm -hmm. How was that for you and just performing classics and then just bringing emerging artists out as well? How was that feeling? You know, it's been ten years, amazing ten, ten years. Rapaholic was an album and I was doing an album lunch and that became a ritual every year that I had to do it. Because I launched the album on the twenty fifth of December. 10 or 11 years ago, it was a success and people called for the show. So then I made it annual. And then and just being alive and still having people pull up and buy tickets and fill the place, that's a big thing to me. And then when we marked the 10 years, we had a lot planned to celebrate it. And that's exactly what we did, it's the rebirth. So we are about to go on another decade journey. And that's why we had to like celebrate that in grand style. So we did the exhibition and um, a few pop-up activ activations and then the main show itself. And yes, you have, every year has new emerging artists and that's one of the platforms that they all want to be on. I thank God for that. Like most artists want to be a rapperholic. So last year was the same. Any artist yeah. that was out the year, they performed on a stage there. Yeah. Okay. So even with like emerging artists that then go globally, what are your thoughts on like the next generation of African talent? So you've got like Black Sheriff, mm -hmm. you've got Raymond doing his thing now. Exactly. What are your thoughts on the next gen? The beauty of the music journey is that every generation is going to do better than the generation they came to meet because they're going to look at everything you've done and do better, you know, which is supposed to be that because what we have done will make sense where the next generation pushes the culture further. So that when the conversations go further, Sakodia is likely to be mentioned as one of the people that also was in there. So mm -hmm. I'm all up for the next generation always going to the next level. And trust me, it's just getting started. Because when I see what Black Sharif is doing, uh, Rema, as you said, you can mm -hmm. just only imagine what's about to happen in the yeah, next two, yeah. three years. It's really going to be huge. And I'm super excited. Okay, man. And um, just touching on your career, what would you say, what moment in your career has brought you the most happiness? When I had my kids, yes, my first my daughter, my son, these okay. two uh, time in my life in general made me appreciate that more than, yes, I love music. I love the fact that I think uh, your ego comes in as a rapper also, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not just a, an Afrobeat artist, I'm a rapper. So okay. there's a lot of ego in there where you want to win awards, you want to do this. But when I had my kids, I realized what is more important in life. And I'm super proud of that moment and the fact that I'm, and I thank rap for giving me an opportunity to take care of these okay. kids, you know, so these two things. But then that moment when my children came into my life, I think I, I cannot, not even any award can be uh, compared to that. So I would say that's the biggest highlight in my life. Yeah. Okay. So slightly related, I've got twins on the way. Oh, yeah. But um, just talking about like added motivation, how mm -hmm. do you balance that? So becoming a parent and then switching your focus to music as well. How do you find the balance? When my daughter came, I went, I blacked out. Okay, okay. I was so into her that it, nothing else mattered. Like even when I'm, it got, it got very serious when, when, I, when I was being booked to go on tour, I start thinking about how long I'll be away, okay, then I want to okay. like cancel it. It was that serious. I was so into her, but then I realized the same person that you are so into has to be proud of you. So you have to get back on the road. But yeah, it, it affected me in, in different ways. Even how you write and the things you want to say, because mm -hmm. uh, you want to be responsible for what you're saying. You can't tell her this and then you're saying this. So first, when I was free, I could I could get away with a lot of lyrics, but now you can't. You know. Yeah. 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 And and she's very inquisitive. She will ask everything that you're saying. You know. So it puts me in check when I'm writing. Okay, man. And um, so I touched on the next generation of African talent, but even like the UK artists with African backgrounds. You have Dave, you have yes. J-Hoss, you have Stormzy. What do you think of the UK talent at the same time? It's great, it's great. Um, but I, I'm, I'm an old soul, I'm always stuck in time. I keep saying this. I think, I don't know what it is with gigs, but I've been stuck on gigs for a very, very long time. Like okay. that He's sound. in America <laughs> right now. Yeah, 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 yeah right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, he, he has been one of my favorite because I'm, 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 I'm more keen on, everybody has their strength. My strength has always been about delivery and flow. So gigs delivery has, is, to me, it's like everything. Mm -hmm. you know, I've never seen somebody do it that, that smooth and actually still sounds dope. So For so long as well. Exactly. Yeah, for, yeah. And I can relate. You know, that's mm -hmm. why I like him because I like people. And I see, and that's why we click, because he's a very uh, good friend of mine. I hosted him in, in Ghana 
went around, you know, we went to have food and, and the okay, okay. restaurants and then we just had a great time. He's a person with great energy. I think I think he doesn't take this music thing too serious as how other artists take it, you know, because he's a real person, he's a real human being. So he focused on being him mm -hmm. than being a celebrity. And that's what I like about him. He's also about his kids the same way. Yeah. So I see a lot of similarities when I see him. And I, I now understood why I liked him before meeting him, you know, because I, okay. I could sense the energy. So yeah, I'm super, a big gigs fan. I think anybody that knows me know that. Okay, man. And um, I just want to talk about, about advice. So what would you say is the best advice given along to you along the way? To me, um, I was an OG in Ghana, I think a high life musician, and he said, I should grow before my fans outgrow me. Okay. Yeah, I shouldn't wait for the fans to grow before I catch up, because that's a very hard race, you know. But you have to grow, and then they have to catch up with you. So you show them how it's done, because they're following, not in a bad way, but of course, they see you as somebody who knows something. Mm -hmm. So you have to always be ahead of what you're doing, and then they have to catch up to what wherever you're heading to. But you don't wait and be comfortable till your fans outgrow whatever you're doing. And now it's hard to like get them to come back to listen to you. you yeah. know? So you have to be like 10 steps ahead. If, even if you talk about fans, um, music always changes. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you keep up with your music? Is it a thing of staying authentic, staying true to yourself? Or do you feel like you have to change your sound as the years go, go on? Um, I think I, I stay true to myself about all of that because the sound is changing and I love music to start with. So even if mm. it's changing, it's still music and I mm. love it. You know, I don't, I don't criticize new sounds so I can jump on it and still be myself. Because um, I, I, the only thing that's hard for me is to like literally to dumb it down. Because mm -hmm. this new music is a bit more like, you know, you just a few words and that's it. I came from yeah, an era yeah, where you yeah, had yeah. to say a lot, <laughs> right? Lyricism. Exactly. So yeah. I tried to find a way where I could still say a lot, but still appeal to the new crowd. So okay, yes, okay. I can change the sound a bit, but I don't lose myself totally. Yeah. Okay, man. And uh, finally, what advice do you have for those that are trying to make a career out of music? I will break into the industry. Take it very serious, not just music, whatever you're doing. It can only make sense when you take it serious and you have to be stubborn about it. Nobody can tell you how you're going to make it. You know, you are the only person that sleeps at night and see what you see. Not even South Korea can tell you what you're going to do. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if I'm not a fan or I don't like what you're doing, that doesn't determine if you're going to make it or not. You know, so you have to be very stubborn about your own dream. You are the only person that sees it and it takes a lot of discipline and sacrifice to be able to get it. You don't have it. You can have it in and out. You know, yeah. one foot in, one foot out. You have to be all out into it. And then, sure, any, anything, even whether good or bad, if you put a lot of energy into it, something is going to come out of it. Okay, man. Much appreciated. Appreciate. Thank yeah. you. Good luck with the tape. My brother. Yeah. Good, Thank good, you, good, man. good.